It's odd, isn't it, when you think about it? You know, you talk to someone and that leads to another story, a mystery or something like that. And that's what happened when I was lucky enough recently to interview an elder actor. And he basically said, you know, oh yes, well that premiered at the Regal in Marble Arch in London. And I thought, I've never heard of that one before, you know, the Regal. I knew there was an Odeon which they recently knocked down, even though, of course, it had royal patronage previously. But that's now a block of flats isn't everything. That's the problem, isn't it? Now, what's interesting about this particular story is there was indeed a regal in Marble Arch and it really had an amazing background story. It's right really next door to the Cumberland Hotel, another art decor beauty if you've not been in. And of course, uh, for many people, a symbol at the bottom end of Oxford Street, a little bit like Selfridges. But this particular regal had, as I say, an amazing royal connection and I wanted to share it with you as ever. Let me explain. Morning, lovely to see you. Yes, we're in Parliament today. Uh, can you see? Yes, yes, Parliament there. And then a little bit of Big Ben. And then, of course, you know, all the flags were busy doing all of the, um, oh, you know, the election stuff. But to be honest, it's driving me a bit nuts now because every day they come out with things they're not going to do, don't they? You know what I mean? Oh, we're going to keep pubs open. Suddenly we're going to open banks. I called one of them out on that, by the way. I said, well, I've just contacted that major bank. They said they've got no plans for doing that. Oh, oh, yes, but we'll make them. Yeah, right. You understand how politicians lie. As I said, they'll never be as old as they look, will they? That's the problem. Interesting, though, this particular story, as I said, that I wanted to share with you. It really symbolises a building that now no longer exists. And when you see it here right now and look at that picture, you think, what a magnificent building. Could they have not repurposed that, remade it, done something with it? all knocked down and completely disappeared. And now basically it's just a supermarket, a Sainsbury's. Isn't that sad? But the story of the Regal is a little bit more. Let me explain. Now the Regal opened on the 29th of November, 1928. And sadly it closed on Sunday, the 22nd of March, 1964. It could seat 2,400 people. And it, as I say, first put an appearance literally with a movie called The Singing Fool, which was a mega hit for Al Jolson. This ran for 10 weeks and literally was sold out every single performance. That's how big that particular movie was. Now, like all good cinemas, they had a magnificent Christie Four Manual organ, and this was Europe's largest organ inside that particular cinema. Now, what was interesting about this was nobody really knows exactly what happened to it as everything when they stripped them apart seemingly nobody knows again but to make sure that people thoroughly enjoyed the opening night they did try of course and get uh, senior British royals but sadly that wasn't the case so in their place they managed to get the Prince and Princess Arthur of Connaught and this ensured that basically the London Illustrated News covered the opening night there was spectacular caviar, champagne, and a free-for-all, literally, so people could sample exactly what a delightful new building this was going to be. However, as time moved on, and it always does, by the 9th of September 1945, basically, the Odeon chain had decided to take it over. Now, the Odeon Marble Arch was the first cinema in the UK to screen 3D, employing two projectors running together in sync. The first 3D attraction was Buana Devil, shown on the 20th of March, 1953. The reason why I wanted to share this particular story with you is it's quite simple. This apparently was the secret local cinema of Princess Elizabeth and of course Prince Philip as he was then. Well, not then was he, but of course, you know what I mean. And they continued to go to the cinema discreetly on and off for many years until its closure. In fact, I can reveal that the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh actually saw their very first 3D film at that cinema. And it was ideal, you see, because they could hide behind those, do you remember the glasses? If you're old enough, you do remember. They, they could hide behind the glasses and nobody actually knew that they were sat amongst royalty. Now the Odeon, as it then was, illuminated the top end of Park Lane. And it was one of those, those sort of symbolic buildings that everybody grew to love. It was a sad day, as I say, in the early 1960s when they decided to pull it down and of course it held a fair few memories for the Queen and the Duke. They often would pop there to see exactly what all the fuss was about at their local cinema. Now some might say, of course, well they could have had it inside the palace. They had their own cinema. But like everybody, even royals, they enjoy a night at the flicks and the Queen and the Duke were simply no different. Sadly now though, all that remains of the magnificent regal at Marble Arch is this. 
Now isn't that a shame? Neil Sean, Parliament London.